I'm Dr. Robert Anderson and I'd like to talk a little bit about egg freezing. Egg freezing is something that lots of people have been wanting to be able to do for many years for a number of reasons. Unfortunately, until recently, the technology that we had available to us simply didn't deliver the results that we could have expected. There are a number of reasons why egg freezing might be desirable. Firstly, fertility preservation in patients with cancer prior to treatment is an important area. More and more people are surviving cancers in the reproductive age these days, and so the ability to preserve fertility is more and more important. Oftentimes the treatment involving radiation and or chemotherapy can destroy all the rest of the eggs that are left in the ovary. Therefore, if it was possible to remove some of the eggs prior to treatment and freeze them, then when the patient had completed her treatment and was disease free, those eggs could be thawed out and used later on. Secondly, some women simply choose to preserve their fertility because at the time that the eggs are obtained, they're not ready to have babies yet for career reasons or other reasons. And so at a time when their fertility potential is higher, it might be advantageous to remove and freeze some eggs and then use them later on when the fertility may be less because they're older. Thirdly, there are certain types of religious, uh, ethical, and moral choices that people make that simply don't allow the freezing or fertilization of uh, multiple eggs and embryos. Uh, therefore, if you freeze eggs in an unfertilized state, they could be thawed out a few at a time when needed without leaving a large number of fertilized eggs or embryos frozen that may or may not ever be, be used. This alleviates the need to make difficult decisions about what to do with leftover embryos that will never be used. Lastly, occasionally in the in vitro fertilization laboratory, something unexpected might happen where we don't have the sperm available on the day that the eggs are retrieved. This could happen because either the husband is unable to produce the sample, is sick, out of town, or for some other reason we don't have sperm available. In instances like this, the eggs could be frozen and then used later when the sperm becomes available. The reason that this procedure is now more useful than it was in the past is the result of the way in which we freeze the eggs. There are two basic ways to freeze eggs, and embryos for that matter. One is called the slow freezing method, and the second one is called vitrification. In the slow freezing method, a computerized freezer is used which takes the embryo, or egg, to a lower and lower temperature in a stepwise fashion. This procedure takes approximately two to three hours and is fairly labor intensive. When the embryo is thawed, it's thawed in a significantly similar way where the embryo is uh, gradually brought back to room temperature. The problem with egg freezing with a slow freezing method is that the percentage of those em eggs that have survived the freezing uh, technique was very, very low initially. And secondly, the freezing and thawing damaged a very important component of the egg called the spindle apparatus, which is necessary for fertilization. So the fertilization rates were extremely low, approximately only 10%. This made the usefulness of egg freezing with that older technology uh, very poor. The newer technique called vitrification takes an egg and forms basically a glass-like solid from it by plunging it into liquid nitrogen and reducing the temperature very quickly. This procedure is done over a few minutes time and with this technique, at least in our hands and those of others who have done it quite a bit, the survival rate of the eggs is high, over 90 percent, and the fertilization rate is high as well, usually over 75 percent. This has allowed us and others to obtain pregnancy rates of at least 50 percent in frozen thawed eggs in instances where we've used it. Let's go to the laboratory and see how this, this procedure is performed. Okay, with our oocyte vitrification, the first step is to uh, select your oocytes. We can freeze up to five oocytes in an individual uh, straw. So what we do is we'll pick up our oocytes. We'll place them into some uh, modified holding media.
And then the next step is, is to place them into the uh, first solution for the vitrification. It is a three step process. And in the first step, it sits for five minutes. So I will start that process now. So what we do is we kind of slowly place the cryoprotectant over the uh, cells, rinse them off to make sure that we remove any of the previous solutions. And then we place them in a final holding place where they'll sit for the full five minutes. Uh, while they're waiting, I will go ahead and explain some of the other stuff, which we did in advance. Um, we label uh, our straws. They're, the, they're a high security straw, so it doesn't allow any permeation. Uh, it allows us to have a color ID rod as well as a color label, so it makes it easy for identification. We seal the rod in so that there's no way for the identification to fall out. And then what will actually happen is we'll place the uh, embryo or the eggs in a uh, denuding pipette, uh, a 300 uh, micrometer denuding pipette. We'll load them up in there and then that'll be placed inside of this high security straw. So now after the oocytes have equilibrated for five minutes, we will rinse them through through the second step in the process and allow them to equilibrate in that solution as well. We just kind of gently swish them around to make sure we rinse off all the previous solutions as stated before. And then they sit in the second solution for two minutes. So the final step in the process is where we rinse it through the third step, which is the solution in which it will be finally stored. In. And again, we kind of rinse the solution over it. We quickly um, move it through these solutions, rinsing off all of the previous solution and getting it equilibrated with the final solution. And this product, you want to do this, you know, as quickly as possible, but it usually is done within two minutes. Leave it to equilibrate in this final solution. We'll load up, backload our pipette, the denuding pipette. Load up the oocytes, so they're in the lower portion of our column. We remove the denuding pipette, wipe off any of the excess solution from the outside, place the denuding pipette into the high security straw, and then we seal it. and directly plunge it into the nitrogen. As we can see from the favorable results that we're now able to obtain from egg freezing through vitrification, egg freezing is really a technology whose time has finally come. We expect to be using this procedure more and more as time goes on and expect to have even better results than we do at present. Thank you.